As you've just seen, a brand new precision modeling workflow has just been born with CAD Sketcher, a free and open source constraint-based parametric system within Blender that's letting you do CAD-like design like never before. Now it's still very early days and there's lots of development and features still to come, but I've been working very closely with Loris, the lead developer of CAD Sketcher, to get this past the point of proof of concept and now it's time for us, the community, to bring this precision workflow to life. So I'm here to show you how to get it and install it, how to get started with it, and how you can help CAD Sketcher go further. To get CAD Sketcher, go down into the description where there'll be a link to this official Gumroad page. Here, there's a whole bunch of useful information. It is completely for free, but if you want to support the project, put in an amount here that you would like. If not, just put in a zero and click I want this. This will then give you a zip file, which will go and install over in Blender now. To install CAD Sketcher, it's pretty much the same as every other add-on. Go over to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then go over to Install. Find wherever the zip file is actually saved and then install that add-on. Then you can put in the search here, type in CAD, you'll find CAD Sketcher right there. And the first thing you need to do is install a solver module. All you have to really do is click this Install from PIP, click that. You've got to wait a couple of moments. If things go wrong, you'll get a warning message down here that's going to let you know that you might just need to restart Blender. So with that done, let's go double check that. Preferences, add-ons, here it is. It's installed perfectly for me. As I'm using a 4K screen and all of that, I'm going to change here my entity size up to three, my text size to 45. I'm also going to change my decimal precision to one, my angle precision to one as well. And on my theme here, I like to have my default color right here. I put this all the way up to a nice blue. So let me just show you. I click here, bring that all the way up there. I'm happy with how that is. Brilliant. I'll save it just in case. And there we have it. Now, as the name suggests, we need a sketching surface. To do that, let's press N to open up our side menu. And you'll see we have a new drop down called Sketcher. Let's click this and let's add a sketch. By clicking Add Sketch, it then brings up all these construction axis planes that's asking you where would you like to start this sketch. Select a plane that you would like to sketch on. So I'm going to go from the top down. I'll click this and I'm now inside of that sketch. I'm going to move my 3D cursor for a moment. So that is shift and right click to move it out of the way. And there's also this little point right here. As you can see, this just lets us know that this is a solve point, a 2D solve point, And we are inside of a sketch because here there's this big leave sketch. Now there's a lot to cover here when it comes to constraint driven design and all the rest. But for now, I'm just sort of going to do a very quick overview by just creating a cube. So I've clicked the rectangle tool here. I'm going to left click, drag this out, left click once again. Automatically, it has put these horizontal and vertical constraints on here. The 3D view still works just as normal. But what I'm wanting to do is sort of put this to the center of it. So I'm going to click on the line button here. There are a whole bunch of shortcuts that you can see there. It says invoke shortcut L. I'm not going to use shortcuts in this video for the time being. I'm going to click one point and click to the other point. I'm going to right click to cancel the tool that I'm on. And you'll see that that brings it back to that selection there. I'm going to right click on this line and turn that into a construction line. Now I'm going to select the origin point and the construction line, and I'm going to give this a midpoint constraint. And there we have a nice little midpoint constraint. So now we know that that's going to be set in the middle. I think it's time to give this some dimensions and some equals. So I'm going to go this nice point from point here. The distance between those two is going to be set. Let's click into here. I'm going to click into there and I'm type in five millimeters. I'm happy with that. You can click on any of these and drag them down. If you want to delete, just click and you'll see that there's the delete constraint right there. You can also delete these constraints by just clicking on them. And now to keep life simple, I'm going to select these two edges here and make them equal. Now that those are equal, this is a fully constrained sketch because I cannot move anything anywhere. So now that we have our first fully constrained sketch, how do we turn this into mesh? Well, right here we have the lovely converting options. You can convert this either into mesh 
or you can convert it into a Bezier. So I'm going to go for a mesh for now. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click leave sketch. And here we have our lovely face that is being driven by that sketch. So I'm going to press W for my selection, select this face. I'm going to add a modifier here, which is going to be a solidify modifier. Brilliant. And I'm going to put this in the positive and I'm going to make this four millimeters. There we have our first sort of object. Now that we have this, I've decided that I want to change the size of this. How do I change that? I go over to the sketch here. I click on the little pen to edit it. And now I'm back into that sketch. I can just click here, change this to, I don't know, let's go for two millimeters. Hit enter. That's done that. I leave the sketch. Everything's been updated. As you can see, this is incredibly powerful. Okay, now you might be wondering, okay, you've just shown me how to create the work plane and that is very limiting. It's very much just based on the origin. It is, and remember that this is very much still in development, but there is one other way of doing this that I want to show you. I'm going to add a bevel modifier here. I'm going to crank this up quite a bit to about there. Okay, now we have a lovely face right here that I would love to put a hole that just goes through this. How would I go about doing that? Well, here we have add a work plane. If you click and let it hold down, you'll see that there's two different ones. One of them, the default one is a mesh face and the other one is manually. So I'm gonna go for mesh face and you've got this. I'm just gonna left click and that's created a work plane right there. Now that this has created an entity of a work plane there. I'm going to go back into my normal selection. I'm gonna click add sketch. And now I have this work plane here to be able to reference off. So I'll click into there. I'm now in that work plane there. I can select this circle. I'm going to click there, go out this way. And let's just do a nice little click to there. Let's set this, the size of the circle to 0 0.5 might be a little bit too big. Um, yeah, let's go for a 0 0.25. There we go. I'm happy with that. So now that we've got that there, oh, I've got to right click to cancel the operation and right click again to go to normal selection. I'm going to leave that as it is, not constrained at all. So I'm going to leave the sketch at this point, but I've got to make sure that I change my conversion type to mesh. So then when I leave, it turns into mesh. Now with that done, I can select that mesh that I've created right there. I can solidify it as well. Let's go and put this to 0.5. Let's bring this up like that. And the reason why I've got that at 0.5, actually, I should probably just send that to one zero, I mean, is because there can be rounding errors if I set this to just minus one. Let me show you just quickly how there could be. So with this one now selected, I'll select this one over here. I'll go control minus. And here there's a little bit of a rounding error. This is something, remember, we are in development. We need your help and other contributors. So just going to do the offset a little bit off like that. And it will be just as precise as always. So there it is. This is CAD Sketcher in a nutshell. There's so much more to go into this, but for the time being, I'm just going to show you how to do a couple of the other constraints around the about place. So I'll go back into our original sketch here with our cube, and I'm just going to move over to here to just show you a couple of things. So let's go into a line creation. Let's create two lines here. So right click, then I'll create another line like this, brilliant. And I would like to create a curve that's going to be tangent across these lines. Well, I'm just going to click the point curve there, click one of these, and then click to the other one. This has now joined up these points. The reason why I'm saying this is because right this minute, this is not supported. We cannot go like this and then select these two points and try and do a coincident. Coincidences are currently not supported. They will be supported definitely in the future, but for the time being, we haven't sorted out the auto merge. So just be aware of that. So make sure that when you're making some of the things here, you just have to make sure that you make them correctly. As you see, when things are selected, they show up here as entities. And if you're wanting to make this tangent, we'll select both of these here, and then we're just going to create a tangent constraint. And this is now tangently connected. Now there's 101 more things that I can show you about CAD Sketcher and all of that is coming, I promise. I'm gonna be doing an entire free course 
here on YouTube, just like I did for Precision Modeling and Blender. And in the time being, we need you to help get CAD Sketcher out there. Share this video, share this information with other makers and let them know that this is happening inside of Blender. Join the CAD Sketcher community. And for you, you developers, please consider contributing to the project. The links are down in the description. Please, please, please. We'd love to turn this into something amazing for everyone. So with that all said, I'd love it if you join the Maker Tales Discord as well, as I'm going to have a CAD Sketcher channel specifically in there as well. And a big thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And without you, I would have not been able to get so involved with CAD Sketcher and truly help make this add-on a real reality. With that said, a big thank you to my VIP makers, Jem Oskinak and David Fernandez. It really means a lot. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. As I just said, remember that we have a Discord and I'd love to see you there. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.